this video we're going to be discussing the basic operation of your engraver so the first thing you want to we're going to talk about is your air pressure and uh, basically where you have the uh, regulator mounts on the front of your table so you want to make sure you have air pressure to that system okay and um, you have two regulators there your slide and your engraver okay so the slide pressure controls how much pressure is implied to the slide that engraves that en engages the gr engraver downwards and the, en the engraver regulator controls the engraver I recommend you have the engraver set to 90 psi and your slide is going to vary between 10 and 20 psi now adjusting that should be a rel it's adjusted here at the factory and it should be but you may want to adjust it okay and we're going to talk about that in just a second um, so and the next the last most important thing about with the engraver is when you have it set up the electrical plug that comes out of your panel needs to plug into the back of your control box if you plug it into the back into a power strip when you apply pressure to the system and put air pressure onto that engraver um, regulator it's going to simply drop your slide down and it's going to stay down okay so if you look on the back of your control box there is a plug that states auxiliary AC out 5 amp max letter B okay so that's B for the auxiliary output B okay so that's where you want to have that plug plugged into okay now if you have it plugged into the correct spot so I have the standard um, plasma cutting profile pulled up here that's the one you want so I'm going to pull my z-axis up here initially so one I have pressure applied to the regulators by plugging in air and two I have the electrical outlet or electrical plug plugged into the back into output B now if I come down here and click output B that allows me to engrave engage the slide so that indicates that everything's set up properly okay so now the pressure at which you set the slide engraver will control how fast this engraver descends and in addition to that my move my web camera up here up on the top here there is a speed control by adjusting this speed control I can adjust the speed at which the engraver descends and how fast it engages what you want to see here basically is when your engraver is engraving you want to see a nice smooth quick motion downwards but you don't want it to slam down excessively hard if you set the pressure on your slide too high it will damage the back of this so that's why I say nothing over 20 psi at the max. I think right now we have ours it set to right at about 15 or so. Okay, so be careful with how much pressure you allow to go to that slide. Okay. So the the next thing I want to talk about is turning on the engraver itself. So I'm gonna engage the slide so you can see the engraver you turn on the engraver by twisting this black ring here okay so now if I twist it you can hear it ramps the pressure up lower or faster so generally I'll turn it up all the way when I'm doing an engraving but you can play with it you'll get different looks to your lines by having it um, higher or lower okay so um, now the engraver is quite loud I recommend you have hearing protection anytime you're using it okay 
So let me turn that off here real quick. Now, a quick caveat, your, air, your engraver requires oil. So up on the top, you have an oiler. It's very important to have oil in that system, okay? And it's adjustable. You want to see about when the engraver's running, if you turn it on full, you're going to see about maybe one to two drips per minute, really, is what the flow rate you want, okay? And so it's not very much. It doesn't take a lot of oil, but it is important that you have oil. Now, if you're, you haven't used your engraver for a long time, you may be in a situation where um, the engraver's just dried out and it doesn't want to start. When you turn it on, you'll hear the hissing, but it, you don't hear the vibration, okay? So in that case, two things you can do. One, you can, if you look at the top where the uh, air hose comes into your engraver, there's a little black ring. If you pull down on this black ring, plastic ring, and pull up on the tube, they'll pull apart. It's a quick release. When you have the air hose pulled out, now of course do that with the air pressure off. You don't want to do that with the pressure to the system, okay? You can drip some air to oil inside your engraver to get it lubricated, okay? Put your hose back in. Now, the easiest way to do this is to simply drop your torch down closer to the plate. Make sure your engraver's on. As you can see, it's... And what you can do is simply tap it on the steel. And by tapping it on the steel, it'll often break it loose and get things flowing and so that your engraver starts to run properly. Okay? <clears throat> so, we've checked the air pressure, got it right, our engraver runs. We have the engraver system plugged in properly so that our output B operates it. So, now we know everything's set up correctly to use your engraver. Okay? So now I want to talk a little bit about just doing a straight engraving um, without doing any kind of uh, uh, cutting, okay? So to do that, we're just going to do a little bit of text for starters, okay? I'm going to come in here, and so you can do text multiple ways, okay? Um, I have QCAD pulled up here. You can do text in uh, Inkscape. Um, and uh, but I'm going to do it in, in QCAD because this is a, a nice advantage of QCAD over a lot of 2D CADs. You could do text in them. Many CAD programs won't allow you to do text properly. Okay, so I can just click on my text box here, and I can come in here and pick, you know, whatever uh, font I want essentially. I'll just do a nice capital A. I'm going to make it three inches tall, and I'm going to make it bold, click OK, allows me to place my A where I want it. To stop placing A's, I right click, okay. So right now, I have a letter, okay, but this doesn't have any lines around it. So if I were to save this right now as a DXF, my DXF will be empty because it's not broken out into lines yet. So the first thing you need to remember, once you create lettering in QCAD, is you have to select it by using your select tool, then go up to modify, then go down to explode. Once I've exploded it, now it's created line segments around the letter. Okay? So now I'm ready to save this as a DXF, and we'll run through how to engrave it. So if I go file, Save as. I'm going to save it on my desktop. I'm going to save it as letter A. Okay. So now we'll go back to Command C and C. I can close out of QCAD. So now I'm going to go into Sheet Cam. I'm going to open up Sheet Cam, closed out QCAD. I'm going to go File, Import Drawing, go to my desktop, there's my letter A, 
I'm going to bring it in, make sure my scaling is set to inches. My drawing position is lower left. So it brings in the A. And so now I'm going to set up an engraving for this. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to go down to, it can either do here, create new jet cutting operation, or under operation, and go plasma cut either way. And when I do this, I'm going to set up, first thing I'm going to set up is my offset. Because I'm doing an engraving on this, I don't want an offset. I want it to engrave directly on this line. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go no offset. Now, my layer is going to be my zero layer, which I have over here. The tool, I'm not going to pick a plasma tool. If I go all the way to the bottom, I'm going to have a plate marking tool. Click on that plate marking tool. Okay. So if I use this one, if I, just for, uh, to look at this tool, if I click on these three little dots here in this box, it opens up the tool profile, and it shows that it is an a plate marking type tool. And my diameter is set very small, my feed rate set 50 inches a minute. You can change that if you want. Cut height set to zero. Start delay is about half a second, which I find is a good delay for it to actually do the slide and then starting before it starts motion. So, um, but if you change the speed on your slide, you may need to change this delay. Feed rate, 50 inches a minute seems to work well. If you speed this up, you will get a different type of line, different look. You can play with that if you want. I'm just going to click OK to close out of this. Okay. And so now, lastly, we're going to make sure we don't have any lead ins. Now, since I'm doing a no offset, it would normally have no lead ins anyway. So I click OK. Okay. So unless I have offset on our lead ins on open pass, <clears throat> um, it's not going to give me an offset. So I have lead in set to none, lead out set to none. I click OK. It shows me I'm going to engrave the center of the A and then the outside of the A. Okay. So that looks good. I'm going to go run post processor. And I'm going to save it on my desktop, letter A, NGC. Click Save. Click OK. And so now I'm going to minimize sheet cam, pull up my command C and C. Now I'm going to go open, letter A, and GC. All right, so now my letter A is pulled up. Let me pull up my webcam. So basically, the system. So since I just pulled this up, the first thing I'm going to do, as always, is reference my table. I have not referenced my table since I powered this system up. So first I'm going to go, I'm going to scroll, jog close to my home switches and go home X, home Y. And then go zero X, zero Y. I'm going to jog over a piece of plate and I'm going to home my Z. And I go zero Z. Okay. So now my machine zero has been set. So first off, I'm going to do my engraving for this letter. We're just going to do it right here. And now my zero point for my engraving is going to be where my torch is. So that's where the corner of my A is going to be, is right there. So I'm going to set zeroing my X, Y, and Z. Okay. So I'm going to pull my torch up. First step, of course, I, has, I have to turn on my engraver. Now, I'm not going to be doing any plasma cutting, so I don't have to worry about the plasma at this point. But I just have to make sure I have the correct pressure to my engraver and my engraver is running. And of course, make sure everything else is set up right. There's nothing on the rails. I do recommend that you wear ear protection when you're doing this. Now, with this small piece of plate, I'm going to have to hold it down to prevent it from moving. Okay, the engraver will make your plate move all over the place. Okay, unless it's really heavy. 
So it works well with large sheets. You can put a large sheet on here. Um, you know, but if it's a thin material, still may need to hold it down. Okay, so you have to be aware of that. Okay, but particularly with this small piece, I'm going to have to hold it down. And it, you want to hold it down pretty firmly because it, once it starts vibrating, it really wants to move around on you. Okay, so first step, make sure your engraver's on. So I got that puppy at full blast. Should be ready to go. Okay, so I'm going to hold down the plate. So the first thing I'm going to do is hit run. Now since we're not doing a plasma cut, once I hit run, the machine is going to start moving. It will not, as you normally have seen, wait for you to hit resume. Because we don't have to wait to check the voltage. Okay? So, I'm going to hit run and hold down the plate. Okay, so now I'm going to turn my engraver off. So now we've completed our engraving. And that gives you a good idea of what you're looking at. Okay, so that is doing a straight engraving. Next, we're going to be talking about how to combine engraving and plasma cutting okay so to do that we're gonna go back into sheet cam okay and you can follow along with this I'm gonna minimize my camera here to get that out of the way I'm gonna go file new job I'm not gonna save my changes I'm gonna go file import drawing and I'm on your desktop you have a test file folder or at least you did when you got your table okay in that test files we have the files we use to test your plasma and one of them will be this wire mount okay if you click on that make sure your scaling set to inches lower left click OK it's gonna bring in this file so now what I want to do with this setup is we're going to I'm going to show you how to set it up so you can engrave these interior cuts just like you would if you say had some lettering so let's say for example we want to engrave these interior cuts we want these circles and this open line to be engraved and then we're going to cut this circle this circle and the perimeters okay so the way we do this is by setting up multiple layers. So right now everything's on one layer, the default layer. If I were to create an engraving operation using this layer, it would engrave everything. Okay, I don't want that. So what I want is to go up to here, you're gonna see edit contours, or you can click on mode, and we'll also take you to edit contours. Once you're in the edit contours mode, Okay, the easiest way is to simply drag a box around what you want. And anything that's fully inside that will be selected. Okay, you can also hold down the control button and then click on the different parts. Okay, and if I continue to select all these parts, that I want, it'll, you know, it'll give them all to me. So I'll just draw a box, it's easier. They're all selected. Once they're all selected, I go right click on the mouse and I can go move to layer. And I'm gonna create a new layer. And call this engraving. So now I have two layers over here. It has turned these red, as you can see. 
So it no longer looks at this as being part of this part. So this is a separate part in Sheet Kim's mind. Okay. So now that I have them set up on next separate layers, the first step is to create an operation for the engraving. As normal as so it's anytime you make a change to this, it remembers what you did last. So you want to be aware of that. Um, I already have my no offset selected. I have to select my correct layer, which is engraving. I have my plate marker tool already selected. I already no lead ins and no lead outs. I click OK. It sets up the operation to make this engraving. Next, I want to do the plasma cut. Okay, so I'm going to do another operation. This time, I'm going to do outside offset, select my default layer, and I'm going to select the proper tool. So right now, I have fine cut, let's see, fine cut 16 gauge steel. That matches my tips that are currently in my plasma cutter. Okay, and the material I'm currently working with. I'm going to go arc lead in. And everything looks good. I'm going to click OK. And it creates my operation for the plasma cut. So now, with that set up, I can post process. I go post process. I'm going to save it to my desktop. It's going to be, I'm going to change it to wire mount engrave. So now I've saved it to my desktop. So now we'll go back to command CNC. I'm going to close out my current part and I'm going to open up the new NGC file I just created on my G code. Double click on that, pulls it up. First thing you'll notice is that the let the these are offset from where they would normally be. The reason for that is there is a difference between obviously where my torch is and where my engraver is. Okay? So that offset that you're seeing in the display is showing the offset the machine is going to do when it does this cut. Okay? So one important thing you really want to keep in mind is that there is a predetermined offset between, there's a distance between here and here that is calculated in an XY offset. And that's built in, it's written into the post processor. And from the factory, we set it up properly. So it has, it will offset the correct distance so that when you make a engraving and then do a plasma cut around it, it will put your engraving in the right spot relative to where the torch cuts. Okay. So our little circles and uh, will be in the right spot on our part. Now, if you have changed the position of this torch, you've either tilted it for whatever reason or adjusted it, or you've had, for the instance, a significant situation where you've crashed the torch and it may have adjusted it inadvertently, you have to be aware of that. And you may need to redo the offset between the tip of your engraver and your torch in order to get it set up correctly, okay? So, you really want to keep that in mind. We're not going to cover that. That's covered in a separate video. Okay. So, but I know that this engraver um, offset is currently set up correctly. Now we're going to set my zero point to make this cut. So, I'm going to make it right next to my A here. I'm going to say... So this is going to be the zero point for my cut right here, where my torch is. I'm going to zero out my X, Y, and Z. So now I'm going to start doing my checklist. I have my plasma set up. I have it to the right amps. I have the right tips in, cutting the right material. My program is set up for the right material. 
and the right tips. Um, I have air to my engraver. And I know that my engraver is plugged in correctly. So that output B engages it. Okay. And the last step is I'm going to turn on the engraver. So what we're going to see here is the machine is going to touch off at the zero point or the, the start, the first cut. It is then going to offset the torch so that the engraver is in the correct, correct position, engage the engraver. It will complete the engraving and then it will offset again so that the torch is in the right spot and then it will do the cut. Okay. And it will, uh, so basically what it's going to do is, is when I hit the run button, it will do the engraving first and then it's going to pause as it normally would and ask you to check your voltage. And then you're going to hit resume and the machine's going to do the cut. Okay. So first off, I'm going to turn on my engraver. Of course, remembering I'm going to have to hold this plate down when I do this, okay? So for starters, I'm going to hit run. The machine's going to do the engraving. Be careful to not move the plate. So now it's going to ask me to resume. So I'm just going to click on resume and it's going to do the plasma cut. I'm going to turn my engraver off. Okay. So, we're now done. We completed the cut. As you can see, the holes are in the right position. So, that's doing the basics of working with your engraver. Now, one last thing I want to talk about and it has to do with in sheet cam if you were doing multiples of this okay let's say so I'm gonna go into options job options I'm gonna increase my plate size let's say it's 48 by 48 I have my part down here with the engraving. Let's say I want to do an entire sheet of these. Okay, so I can go into the nesting. I can right click. I can use an array. And I can say fit to material. Click OK. Now it fits to the material. And so I'm going to do, so if I have it, depending on how you set it up, will depend on how the machine does its operation okay so if I go into options and then job options okay nesting okay so you can see that we are going to be doing the so if you go keep parts together what you will get is that the machine will do the engraving, pause, ask you to hit OK, it will cut the perimeter, go to the next part, do the engraving, pause, 
So if you do that, that's what you're going to get. But if you use minimize tool changes, now what you're going to get is it's going to split it up so that you're going to get your engravings, as you can see, all done first. And then it will switch back off and start doing the plasma cuts. Okay. Now, this is the easiest, well, this is the best way to do a whole bunch of engravings and then do plasma. One very important caveat is you cannot have your plate move. All right. If your plate moves while you're, you're doing all these engravings, then they're not going to be in the right spot when it comes back to do the cuts. Okay. So that's um, really important. So if you're doing something like this, you have to keep your plate still and you don't want to have any errors or mistakes because um, it can be more difficult to uh, pick back up. Not that you can't, but so yeah. So minimize tool changes in this situation, but normally I would rather you keep it on keep parts together when you're just doing normal plasma cutting. Okay, so I'm going to set it back here so that it's back to normal settings. So that's, that's it for running with the engraver. Um, thank you for watching and uh, happy cutting.